Hey everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Scott Billings, I'm one of the youth pastors at Calvary Tucson, and we're going to be in Nehemiah chapter 6, so go ahead and turn your Bibles or your phone apps to Nehemiah 6. Again, I miss you guys, looking forward to, to seeing you guys again in person, uh, but don't forget we can still connect on the YouTube channel and also with the Instagram. It's, it's really cool to be able to do this online stuff, but I still miss you. I still miss all of you guys. But I'll go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Nehemiah 6. Let's pray and let's get into our Bible study. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that as we dive into your word that you would speak. Lord, that you would fill us with the Spirit so that we can hear you talk to our hearts. I pray that these would be your words. They wouldn't be mine. And that you would encourage and you would direct and even discipline us if necessary if there's something that we're doing that is not right, Lord, I pray that every single person would experience your peace in these very troubled times and that you would just wrap your loving arms around them and just tell them, some of them just need to hear these words that it's gonna be okay. Lord, I pray that you would minister to us by your spirit in Jesus' name, amen, amen. So last week in Nehemiah chapter 5, we talked about how there's conflict on the inside. There was a famine, and Nehemiah, he's building this whole wall, and Sanballat and Tobiah are the bad guys, and they're trying to prevent him from building the wall. And the whole reason for building a wall, it's not just to, you know, have a gated community. It was because the Israelites going back to the promised land, and they're completely defenseless and exposed. And the way to fortify yourself back in the day was to build a wall so that enemies could not simply just walk in there and take you over. So Nehemiah felt called by God to do this, to fortify and to make the city of, of Jerusalem safe again. And Sambalad and Tobiah, they don't want this to happen. They keep trying over and over again to just completely decimate Nehemiah. So pick it up in Nehemiah chapter 6 where the attacks don't come from the outside again, but they come from the inside. Here in verses 1 through 9, Sanballat and Tobiah and Geshem are back at it, and the wall's almost done, and they step up their game. Tactic number one. This is what Sanballat and Tobiah asked Nehemiah. Hey, Nehemiah, uh, let's get together. You know, let's hang out. Um, you know, we're going to talk about stuff, your wall, how things are going. They ask him to do this four times and every single time, Nehemiah's like, that's not a good idea. For obvious reasons. We have history with these guys. Each time he says no. So that tactic didn't work. So tactic number two, Sambal and Tobiah lie about Nehemiah and his character. They start to spread this rumor about Nehemiah. The only reason Nehemiah wants to build this wall is because he wants to be the king. And he's, they're trying to get that back to... Uh, headquarters, if you will, because there's only one king, you know, in this whole empire. And if they can convince the real king that Nehemiah wants to be king, then Nehemiah will die and then they'll have won. So they try to spread this rumor and Nehemiah's like, it's all in your head. No. So that doesn't work. Verse nine. And they were just trying to intimidate us, imagining they could discourage us and stop the work. So I continued the work with even greater determination. Isn't it true that when you come up against opposition and recognize that, that the real enemy is not flesh and blood like we talked about last week. The real enemy is Satan and his minions. So when you see people in front of you that are acting weird or being mean, they're not the real enemy. Uh, Jesus loves them. The real enemy is Satan and what's going on behind the scenes. But when you get attacked by the enemy and what God wants you to do, doesn't it just make you more determined I was like, oh, don't tell me about Jesus. Is, I don't know if you're like me, but part of me is like, um, I just want to tell you more about Jesus. <laughs> Not in a snotty or, or, a, or, a, or a prideful way, but you're more determined. If somebody says, I don't want to hear about your Jesus, you're just kind of like, all right, like, right, who else wants to hear about Jesus? You just want to keep on going. And that's exactly what's happening here with Nehemiah. Now, this tactic number three, I find quite interesting. I personally find interesting. Verse 10. 
Later, I went to visit Shemaiah, son of Deliah, and grandson of Metabal. If you're looking for great dog or cat names, there's three right there. Who was confined to his home. And he said, uh, let us meet together inside the temple of God and bolt the doors shut. Your enemies, i.e. Sanballat of Tobiah, are coming to kill you tonight. Now, later we discovered that this guy was a messenger from God or a prophet from God. And what that looks like is, hey, Nehemiah, guess what? Um, God told me to tell you that we're supposed to go in the temple, lock the doors because people are coming to kill you. But this is what happens with Nehemiah. Verse 11, but I replied, should someone in my position run from danger? Remember, he's the leader. He's the leader of all this. Should someone in my position enter the temple to save his life? I'm not going to do that. So this is what Nehemiah says. Um, no. <laughs> now, why was this a big deal? Why did Nehemiah say no to this? I mean, should you want to hide if people are coming to kill you? Here's the biggest problem. One, only priests were allowed in the temple. And so if Nehemiah cowered in fear, not only would he not be trusting God, but he would also be breaking the Levitical law and he would be discredited as a leader among the Jewish people. And he's also a good leader, which means he's not going to cower in fear. So he says, uh, no, not going to do that. Verse 12, and I realized that God had not spoken to him. That's really important. Nehemiah's discernometer which is basically that spiritual sense that something is not right, was saying, this guy's not real. This guy is not from God. But that he had uttered this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. See, the enemy gave this dude some cash and said, pretend that you have a message from God and share with Nehemiah and then we'll, we'll kill him. So Nehemiah escapes this very literal assassination attempt. Oh, it's, it's, getting, it's getting real now. It's, it's getting a little crazy. And he has this moment where he realizes it's not from God. And I want to ask you this question. Have you been in a time or situation or a place when somebody's talking to you and this person is telling you something and it sounds spiritual, but you recognize, I don't think this is from God. I've been there. Have you been there? I think a lot of us have been there. And here we're going to talk about that in just a quick minute. We're going to expound on that. Verse 13, they were hoping to intimidate me and make me sin. That's breaking the Levitical law. And then they would be able to accuse me and discredit me. And so Nehemiah sees right through this messenger and says, God didn't tell you to do this. This is crazy. It's not against the Bible. It's not good leadership. This is crazy. We're not doing that. Verse 14, remember, oh my God, all the evil things that Tobiah and Sambalat have done, says Nehemiah. And remember Noadiah the prophet and all the prophets like her who have tried to intimidate me. And Nehemiah is just saying, God, you know. And I really, this is a really important point. Nehemiah didn't try to get even with any of these people. This is really important. Even though these people were trying to shred Nehemiah's reputation, even though they were trying to literally kill Nehemiah, even though they were trying to completely discredit him and they were completely trying to stop the work that God had called him to do, does Nehemiah take revenge? No. Nehemiah doesn't try to get back at them. This is what he says. God, you see all this. Could you deal with it, please? And that's a really good place to be. You want God to defend you. Just because someone looks spiritual and wants to speak into your life it doesn't mean they're automatically from God. Christian, this is really important. This is really important. You and I need to check what they say against what the Bible has to say. And also trust what the Spirit is speaking to your heart at the same time. It's twofold. It's two things. What does the Bible say? And what is the Spirit telling me in my heart and what's going on? Is my discernometer going off? Yes or no? Just because somebody looks spiritual or they, they feel genuine, or they feel authentic, doesn't mean that they are. You want to be careful. You want to be careful about the advice that people give you that is spiritual. You want to always check it against what the Bible has to say, because that's our truth. And this is really important now, because you're listening to all this stuff online, probably more so in greater quantities than what you're used to. You're bored. You're trying to find teachings. You're trying to find this. You're trying to find that. You know, it's locked, you know, some of you are locked down or in quarantine or your, your movement is limited and you're trying to find 
good stuff. But you have to really be careful. Is what you're listening to really from God? You got to check it. Be careful. Is what your friend telling you really from God? And what does God really have for you if that's not what God is saying? You want to be cautious and you want to check and test those things. Verse 15. So on October 2nd, the wall was finished just 52 days after we had begun. This is incredible. Nehemiah and his whole team and all the Israelites, they finished the wall around the entire city in just 52 days. Less than two months. That is fast. If any of you guys have been in a house remodel or you've been in any sort of construction project, you recognize that Anything of that magnitude to be done in 52 days is just miraculous. Like this is a full on miracle. In verse 16, when our enemies and the surrounding nations heard about it, they were frightened and humiliated. They realized this work had been done with the help of our God. Isn't that true? The enemy will realize that your life and mine is a work of God when the attacks don't work. When the enemy tries to take you out and it doesn't work and you're doing what God wants you to do, it sends shivers down in their spine. Because, not because you're awesome, but because God in you is awesome. And God in you is doing this work. And God is doing this work through you and through your obedience and through your pure heart, which is amazing. God is doing this work and it's, it's super cool. Now, verse 17, now during those 52 days, many letters went back and forth between Tobiah and the nobles of Judah. This is really crazy. Verse 18, for many in Judah had sworn allegiance to him because his father-in-law, so now we're talking family, it gets messy, Shechaniah, son of Ira, his son Johanan was married to the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, and they kept telling me about Tobiah's good deeds and they told him everything I said. Whoa. And Tobiah kept sending threatening letters to intimidate me. Here's what happens. Even though the Jews have success and Nehemiah has a win, the enemy has snuck in through a marriage relationship. Because these people that got married, they were in leadership. And whose family did they marry into? Into Tobiah's, the enemy's family. And word kept getting back to Tobiah of what Nehemiah was saying because it was in the family. <sighs> right? This is, okay, this gets really crazy. This is what Satan does. Can't beat him? Join him. And that's exactly what happened. So how does this passage relate to us today? I'm not saying that, guys, you're not going to go build a wall and then you know, slaughter your enemies at school or, you know, I'm saying you're not going to do any of that. Like, that's not what we're saying. These examples are principles for our encouragement and they illustrate the principle and how the enemy, i.e. Satan, can still get at us today. They can still get at us even to this day and how we stand against it and continue to move forward and what we believe God wants to do is so important because even though the Satan has had over 5,000 years of practice, we have the Holy Spirit who knows everything. And that is where the strength is, is that the strength is when we are with God. And there's several different attacks that Nehemiah faced, three kinds. Number one, discouragement. Nehemiah was super discouraged so many steps of the way. And some of you might be more prone to discouragement than to others. And, and whether it's through depression, and again, like, hey guys, de depression, I'm gonna be kind of bold here, depression is, is not a sin, okay? Depression is, is how you're feeling. And for some, it's like a chem chemical imbalance and different things like that. Now, it can lead into sin because of how you handle the feelings, but feelings in themselves are not necessarily bad. Feelings in themselves are bad. It's what you do with feelings is what matters. And so what do you do with the depression? Do you, do you isolate and do you, do you do whatever you want to do? Or do you go to God and say, God, I need help with these feelings? And it's okay, guys. Look, look, I'm not anti-medication. You know, you should totally, totally talk to your parents and to your doctor if you struggle with depression. Sometimes there's a chemical imbalance and you have to take meds for that and that's totally fine. But I just want to encourage you with this. When you and I face those things, do we reach for, and this is going to sound really condescending, and please, please, I love you guys so much. I, I don't mean to, I do not want to be condescending to anybody here. I respect you and I love you. 
but do you reach for the pill as often as you do prayer? I'm not saying that pills are bad. Sometimes they're necessary. But I want to encourage you, Christian, reach for prayer. Re reach for God first. Do those things first and walk in wisdom as to what you should do. Walk, walk in wisdom as to what you should do. No condemnation for those of you that are taking medications for those kind of things. Many times they're needed. And God bless for the miracle of modern medicine, which is super cool. But discouragement can really hit people sideways, can really knock them off course. So Nehemiah faced discouragement. Nehemiah faced personal attacks. Rumors spread about him. And Nehemiah faced literal entrapment. And it's kind of like, ah. So how do you respond to each of these different things? Again, the purpose of the enemy is to either turn you away from Jesus or simply slow you down. That's what Satan is going to do. So here's a couple application points and then we'll be done. First thing is put up your guard. Be ready. James 4, 7 says, Submit therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Nehemiah took precautions and was ready for these traps. So what precautions and what safeguards have you put up in your life against the attacks of the enemy? Now, if it's actual temptation for sin, if you have a pornography issue, do you put apps on your phone to help filter against those things? And if it gets really nasty, do you even have a phone? You see, these are the kind of things, what kind of safeguards do you put up in place so that you don't fall into sin? And again, you really want to be careful about what you put in your ears and what you put in front of your eyes. You really want to be careful. Everything has some sort of impact. Whatever content you and I consume, it has some impact. And the content that God wants us to consume is in line with Philippians 4, chapter 8. Everything that's, that's noble and honorable and trustworthy and true and, and pure. We want to put those things in, our, in, in what we listen to and what we watch and what we put in front of us. Just limit, again, what you watch on the news, especially now with so much negativity. I'm not saying put your head in the sand, but just be careful. Be careful not to go down the rabbit hole, you know, and down that swirling uh, negativity. But really put up your guard. Resist the devil. Guys, if you just stand and fight and you pray, sooner or later, Satan's going to leave. Sooner or later, he's going to bug out. Second thing, test the message. Sometimes, some of us have come, come in contact with very, and I would even say very well-meaning people that, that don't have an impure heart at all. They're very well-meaning people. They might even be Christians, and they may even appear spiritual, but what they have to say to you is not from God. So we want to test that message. We want to be sure that it's from God. And the Bible says that we want to test it against what he has to say in his word, which is the Bible. It could even be a leader telling you to do something. It could even be a friend saying that this is what God wants. But it doesn't ring true in terms of what the Bible says. So how do you test it? Because this could be super confusing. It can be really, really confusing, especially if you have somebody that you've known for a while, or maybe they appear spiritual and you're like, I don't know, like they seem legit, but how can I test it? Here's how you test it. Number one, does it line up with the Bible, like what we've said? And secondly, the Holy Spirit talks to your heart. He talks to your heart and does the discernment or that spiritual awareness of what's going on behind the scenes, are there any flags there? It, it, does your discernometer keep pinging over, be like, nope, this is not good, this is not good. Nehemiah had this, and even when something was not right, he, he knew it. Even though that there was nothing really to, pay, to, uh, to really know that it wasn't right, he just knew that it wasn't right. You see, God gives people that gift, and God gives people that ability to tell what's right. So I have two personal examples of this, so here we go. When I was first dating Jackie, and everybody says, aww, you can say awe in the chat. It'll be, really, it'll be really sweet. When I was first dating Jackie, there was this guy uh, at, here at church. He's not here anymore. And we were talking. And he said, hey, I want to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I was like, okay. So we got to talking. And he said, hey, I just want to tell you, this is from the Lord. I'm like, okay. This is going to be interesting. 
he said, you're dating Jackie, right? I said, yeah, I am. And I was all happy, right? Because we just started like the couple days before that. I just want to tell you that Jackie is not who you think she is. I want to tell you that Jackie is prideful, that Jackie isn't a Christian, that Jackie doesn't know the Lord, that Jackie, and he just, he just continues to completely slander her and trash her and decimate her character. And I'm just, I'm just standing there listening to this and I'm like, I don't think this is from you, God. Because he literally said, this is a message from God at the beginning of the conversation. I was like, I don't think this is from you. And God's like, it's not. <laughs> it, it's totally not. Why? Because it wasn't true, right? You know, it wasn't true at all. Like, that is not who Jackie is. For those of you that know my wife, she is the most loving, the most kind, the most joyful, one of the most committed Christians that you will ever meet. And I'm like, okay, how do I respond to this? Here's what I said. It was really funny. Uh, hey, uh, thank you for that. Uh, thanks for sharing. <laughs> the Bible says that we should test messages from God. And I've listened to what you've had to say. And I've tested it. And I reject it. My relationship with Jackie is between myself, her, and God. And that does not include you, buddy. I'm sorry. <sighs> He was ticked, okay? Like, he was super ticked. And I'll come to find out later, he had a thing for Jackie, and Jackie totally snubbed him. So there, that's what was going on there. So second personal example was this. Um, when I was about to go into full-time ministry, uh, I had a friend, and he was a Christian. He loved God. Uh, as opposed to the other guy who had totally impure motives and bad motives behind what he was saying with about Jackie, I believe this, this guy, he was a true friend. He really was. He didn't have an impure motive at all. And I was really excited and I told him about what I was doing and I was taking the step of faith. I was leaving my job at Raytheon and I was gonna go work at church. I was gonna be a youth pastor and, and do media. And I was so excited and immediately he said, oh, that's not from God. And I was like, I, and that was a response I did not expect. That was a totally response I didn't expect. And again, I really do believe his heart was pure, not like Sam Ballad and Tobiah, but I listened. I, I took the time, I listened to what he had to say. And, and he made some good points. Uh, he actually made some points that I've actually, from a wisdom standpoint, that I've carried through to this day. But I still believe that he was wrong. And guys, that's okay. It's okay to, to disagree. And we ended up saying, hey, you know what? I ended up telling him, thank you so much for sharing your heart. I know that you're sharing this because you really care about me. Can you pray for me? Because if this is not what God wants, then I don't want it. So if you can pray for me that God would show me whether this is what God wants or not, hey, like I, I would love that. And we'll see what God does. And, and he was cool with that. And again, like sometimes people will give advice that goes directly against what the Spirit has told you to do. And I'm not talking like, I'm not saying go disobey your parents or go disobey your teachers. That's not what I'm saying, guys. Like, you know what I'm, don't, don't immediately go to the, to the exception. This is, the, just be real. Sometimes God has spoken something to your heart. And even people that are your friends are not gonna like it. And that's when you have a choice. You can choose to follow God or you can choose to follow what your friends think. And I just wanna tell you that it's time to follow God. It's time to follow what God wants you to do. It's time to follow what God has put in your heart. You know those things. It's time to put those things into practice that God wants you to do. And watch and see what God does in your life. Last thing, push forward. All these things were done to Nehemiah to stop him from what God had asked him to do. And he finished it. And he still pushed through. He pushed through all the attacks. So let me ask you this and we'll close with this. What has God given you to push forward? What has God given you that you might be facing a lot of spiritual attack? And I always like to encourage students when you get a lot of spiritual heat and you, you really sense that fierceness of spiritual attack, and it's not because you've 
you've made bad decisions, it literally is because you are doing exactly what God wants you to do. Pay attention. You're on to something. You are on to something really awesome because it's what God wants you to do. That's why there's so much heat. <laughs> you know you're onto something because of the spiritual attack. Push forward and watch and see what God does. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time. I pray that you would help us to push forward. Lord, I pray that you would increase our discernment so we know what is from you and what is not. Lord, I pray that we would look to your spirit and look to your word to confirm those things. Lord, I also pray that we would take the right precautions, that we would guard against temptation and we would guard against things that would weigh us down or, or, or catch us off guard. Lord, I pray that in this moment, that your spirit would speak to every single person and you would show them what you want done. You would show them the next step. Lord, I pray that they wouldn't worry about the next 10 steps, but Lord, that you would speak to them just the next step. And Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Again, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Remnant of Youth. Go to our Instagram, follow us, DM us. If you have any prayer requests, we would love to pray with you. God bless you guys. We'll catch you next time.